video, I'm going to talk you through some questions on bearings. So bearings, they're just angles, but they're special angles because we always measure them from the north arrow. When we measure these angles, we also measure them in a certain direction. We always measure them clockwise, so the same way as the clock. They also need to be three figures. So if you measure an angle that's 80 degrees, instead of writing just 80, we put a zero at the front so that there are three figures. So in this question here, the bearing of B from A is 80 degrees. I'm going to put that on my diagram to start with because I haven't got anything there at the moment. Before I start, I'm actually going to add in the north arrows because they're not already on the diagram. So you can do that there and you can even join the points up A and B. So now let's get started. So it says the bearing of B from A is 80. So I've underlined from A because this means we have to start measuring the bearing from the north arrow of A. So take your pen, don't put it on the point A. Remember we're measuring from the north arrow. So you're going to put your pen just above the point, somewhere along the north arrow, it doesn't matter exactly where and you're going to draw an arrow which goes clockwise until you hit the line that travels to B because remember it's the bearing from A to B so this angle is 80 so I'm just going to label that on the diagram now the question actually asks to find the bearing of A from B so we're going to do the same thing we're going to take our pen put the pen above the point B somewhere on the north arrow and we're going to draw an arrow clockwise around that point B until we hit the line travelling to A. So that's the bearing that we've got to calculate in this question. So if you're good at parallel lines, angles on parallel lines, and you know what corresponding angles are, then these questions shouldn't be too difficult. You can see, if I extend that line there, just a little dotted line, if this angle is 80, so is that one. That one there is also 80. Just going to label that in a different colour so you can see. And here I've got a straight line. And angles on a straight line always add up to 180 degrees. So this bearing consists of this angle here and then the straight line. So to work out the bearing, I just add those values together. So I'm just going to add 80 and 180 to work that out. So when I add those, I get 260 degrees, which is the bearing of A from B. So that's the first question. Okay, so there are two parts to my second example here. Find the bearing of D from C and afterwards C from D. So in the diagram, I've got my points C and D. I've also got the north arrows that have already been drawn in. And there's a little bit of information here. This angle is 70. So this is only two figures because it's not a bearing because this one has been measured anti-clockwise. So that's correct, just like that. Now, find the bearing of D from C. So remember, that means we're finding the bearing starting from the north arrow of C. So take your point, your pen, and put it just above the point, so somewhere along the north arrow, and then draw your arrow clockwise, always clockwise, until you hit the line that travels to D, because it's to D. Now this is the bearing we've got to work out. So just like in that previous example, we're going to be using the rules of angles on parallel lines. And if I extend this line here, just a little dashed bit here, I can see that this angle corresponds to this one here. So if that one's 70, so is this one over here. Which means the bearing, because they're on the same straight line, must be 180, because they're 180 degrees on a straight line, minus 70. So if I work that out, so 180 minus that angle 70, that gives me 110 degrees. So that's the bearing in part one. Now for the second part. This time it says to find the bearing of C from D. So we have to start at the north arrow of D. So again, take your pen, put it above the point D, and then draw an arrow clockwise around the point until you hit the line that travels to C. So this is the bearing we have to find in part two. Remember, angles in a circle always add up to 360 degrees. 
And I know that one's 70, so this part must be 360 minus that 70. So I can work that out. So 360 minus the 70 degrees, and that gives me 290. All right, hopefully you're starting to find these questions a bit easier. Okay, now I'm gonna do example three. Okay, so in my last example, there are three parts. The first part says find the bearing of B from A. So I've underlined from A because that means we're going to start on the north arrow of A. So I'm gonna put my pen on the north arrow of A, so not on the point, just above the point and I'm going to go clockwise until I hit the line traveling to B. So that is the bearing we've got to work out in the first one. Well, it's actually been given to us already. So that's nice. So the first one is just 60 degrees, not forgetting the zero at the front so that there are three figures in our bearing. Now on to part two, it says find the bearing of A from B. So that means you need to put your pen on the north arrow of B and turn clockwise around the point B until you hit the line traveling to A. So don't stop there, keep going all the way around because this is the line here traveling to A. So that's the bearing we need in part two. So just like before, extend that straight line and you should be able to see that this angle here, 60, corresponds to this one here. So this one is also 60. And there, you've got a straight line, so that's 180 degrees. So in part two, you need to add that angle, 60 degrees, to the straight line, 180, and that will give you the answer. Okay, so that one is 240 degrees. Now, on to the last one. Find the bearing of B from C. So, take your pen, put it above the point C, somewhere along the north arrow, and turn clockwise around the point until you hit the line traveling to B. So this is the bearing you need to work out in the last part. So I can see here, see the blue arrow, that angle there is 170 degrees. I'm just gonna color that in, in blue now. So we know which bit we're looking at, so that's 170. And if I extend this line down here, I can see that this angle corresponds to the angle up there, which is 170, so this one, is also 170 and again just like before I've got a straight line and angles on a straight line add up to 180 degrees so for this last bearing we need to add 170 and 180 together to work out the bearing okay so that gives me 350 degrees so there you go there's bearings just something I want to point out in all of the examples I've done in this video, the diagrams, they're not to scale. So if I was to take a protractor and measure these angles, it's, ex it's extremely unlikely that this would measure 350 and this is 170. So these diagrams are not to scale. And usually when you're given the question, it will say not to scale somewhere on the diagram. So there are other various questions when they are to scale. That's when you would use a protractor but I will cover that in another video soon. So bye for now.